Sorry, I was trying to get a bunch of stuff uh, ready and compiled and uploaded before this all started, but it's all taking a long time. So I'll just do it as we go. So how's everyone doing? <laughs> I'm being like low fidelity Rickrolled. Oh, you guys. Though I feel like I feel like to properly call it Rickroll, it has to like result in you clicking something. I feel like you can't you can't just like play Rick Astley at somebody and you know, I, I feel like it has to be like tricking them into doing something, you know. <laughs> There's the the official definition of Rickrolling. We need to look this up in, in legal terms. Hello, hello everyone. <laughs> so, so how's everyone been? It's been uh, a few weeks now. Um, I was on, if anyone didn't or see the my <laughs> random sparse messages, uh, once a year usually I go visit my family up at a cabin in Minnesota. So we do some fishing and, you know, kind of getting back to nature sort of thing. So I've been... Uh, Doing that for a few weeks now. So I just got back uh, technically yesterday. Um, I was going to have uh, you know, coffee with Eric on the normal Wednesday time yesterday, but my uh, my flight from Minnesota got stopped in Chicago because there were all these storms, and so I was stuck there for like eight hours. And so uh, I was basically sleeping yesterday when we uh, would have been doing coffee with Eric. So, But it's been many weeks since we had it, so I wanted to at least have something this week. So. So hello. Uh, well, the stage was already started when I got here. That that seems to we always seem to have like fewer people when that happens. Um, maybe I will. I'll just make a little announcement. If maybe that will help. We'll see. Ooh, jumping into questions. Uh, why didn't we get this version? Um, that version is kind of, in a way, it's kind of cooler looking because it has, you know, it's more like realistic and gritty looking. But um, what I wound up, the problem with it is it was like a little too organic. Like when I was playing it, it was a little too whooshy and random and uh, a little bit harder to control your character. So yeah, I wound up just kind of flattening it out quite a bit and simplifying it. So um, so that's the reason, basically. That that seems to happen a lot, unfortunately, where, um, you know, I'll model, like when I'm making a, uh, a level, you know, I'd model it on, based on clay or bricks or blocks or whatever, and then uh, scan that into the computer and then plug it in. And, you know, that takes quite a bit of time. Um, and then, you like, you play on it and you're like, oh, this kind of sucks. <laughs> or, you know, there's, there's some, like, gameplay problem with it. Uh, but the problem is then, you know, it is a lot of work to to get that in there. So it's not something where I would want to start over and like redo it out of blocks and then convert it to 3D again. So so I wind up doing a thing a lot of times where I would just kind of like hack it a bit um, in the 3D version, like smooth things out and kind of Photoshop it a bit and try to make the gameplay work a little bit better. So that's, that's kind of what happened uh, with that version of Crag Castle is it got the, the Photoshop... Um, <laughs> Hacking treatment, sort of. There might be, I mean, I I don't know if there are there builds of the game that have the old version out there. I don't even know if I released anything like officially with the old version. How long have you been on this project? From, uh, yeah, technically just about from school. So you can see I'm all like old and gray now. So it's been quite a while. <laughs> um, I... Yeah, I, I started Bomb Squad as kind of a hobby, um, like right around the time I graduated. I went to art school, which was weird because I spent all my time programming, even though I was in art school. But yeah, I started on Bomb Squad right around when I was graduating uh, from college. And yeah, and then I, uh, like for years, I, it was kind of just a hobby where there were years where I just kind of forgot about it for a while and then I'd pick it up again. And then, um, when was I, I don't know how long, like several years later, uh, some buddies of mine, you know, we, we, I'd kind of played it with them and they encouraged me to uh, kind of clean it up and release it as a real thing. And so I did at some point. And then um, 
it did quite well. And then, you know, eventually I got the idea to just do it full time because it was, you know, making enough money to support me and all that. So, so yeah, but it started long ago when I was in college. Let's see how this is going. <laughs> so this is right now, this is my uh, syncing public. Uh, it's called PubSync. It's the little thing. I It stands for public sync. It basically takes like the public version of my repo that has all of, like the internal and uh, the plus stuff and kind of compiles that, filters it, strips some of that stuff out, and then uh, you know compiles all the assets and uploads them to the cache uh, server and things like that, and then pushes everything else to GitHub. So when this is done, you should see a bunch of new stuff on GitHub uh, for the public BS or Ballistica repo, <laughs> provided this all goes through. Uh, it's been a little while since I've pushed everything public, so we'll see, but it's working. Oh, so many, <laughs> so many things flying fast and furious. Uh, so the model being low poly was a choice you took later during the development of Bomb Squad. Um, so by low poly, I mean, you mean like actually low poly, like few polygons? It's a lot of that was to, uh, you know, just make the game run well on mobile. <laughs> um, it probably could be a lot less low poly now. You know, I, I still want to, I definitely want to, you know, going forward, I want to keep the same style with like the clay and the blocks and the kind of handmade feel. But it like the the models themselves can probably be more high poly going forward because like even a low end phone can handle that fine now. Um, when I was... When I first started uh, writing it, let's see. Yeah, here is my uh, my initial uh, target device when I was first porting the thing to mobile was was this, this bad boy here, my old iPhone four from two thousand ten or so, um, which everyone's going to be mad because it's not even on iPhone at the moment. But um, I was using this as a uh, just a test device while I was doing mobile porting, and. Yeah, it was like so constrained back then. It was like a single core processor, very weak. Um, so I had to, yeah, I wound up like having to put a bunch of like hacky stuff in there to try to like speed up the physics simulations and things like that. Um, but also in general, even computers at the time, like a lower end, like laptop or something, you know, it's like I kind of wanted to aim for low poly stuff. Um, anyway, not to not get off on too much of a tangent there. Um, <laughs> Noise. But yeah, no, this thing's all. This was also the first like smartphone I ever owned, so this thing's all nostalgic. I still uh, boot it up every now and then. Just to, for old time's sake. Aww. <laughs> Though I wish I had like the original OS, like this thing ran like iOS, I think it was iOS 3 when I got it or something, some really early one. Um, it'd be cool to, to have that still. Do any of you guys like keep your old like computers or phones or you have like the first laptop you ever had or the first phone or anything like that. I still have my first laptop too, which now that we're just getting all nostalgic, I'll show that. So my, uh, this is where I first started programming on is you know, super old, like PowerBook G4 from 2001, I think. That's probably uh, probably the first computer I was programming Bomb Squad on, maybe, or at least like early versions of Bomb Squad. Um, I was making a few games, and I, I had some stuff I was kind of working on before Bomb Squad happened. Like I was just I was trying to write just like a game engine throughout college, just for fun, but I really didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> so it didn't get very far. Uh, I mean, I made a lot of like tech and little like, pieces and stuff but I never actually uh, turned it into a full game. So that's, I feel like I learned a 
good lesson from that is that it's better to just like aim low and try to make a game like make something that is playable and is complete and then add to it as opposed to like trying to build an engine or trying to build like some fancy thing um because that never <laughs> it it never actually like turned into a game you know but if you have a game then you can like take that game and slowly add to it or you know revise it and improve it oh wow <laughs> oh man this is actually my first my first iPhone 4. This this technically is a replacement. It's the same phone that I had first, but yeah, my first one, uh, it wound up looking a little like this. I think I drop kicked it accidentally or, you know, it, yeah, it wound up like skidding on some concrete. Uh, so that wasn't good. I've never, I am proud though. I've never had like, you know, a lot of people have like the completely shattered, uh, phone that they still use and it still works like I've never never had that so I'm very proud of myself for that at least okay how's this going completing oh no okay well, merp, merp. all right sinking sinking still going so anyway yeah for um oh Pub sync complete, hooray. All right, now that's done, so. Now I have my magic little commands that I run to pull everything back from Fro Mini here. So. All right, <laughs> don't mind me for just a second. I'm just gonna get the next stage of this going. So push, I run push blessing. Um, so what push blessing does is it kind of bakes some blessing stuff into the game and then uh, pushes that stuff to get. Um, and I have to do that before I release uh, test builds because test builds have, they're blessed. So blessed just means that the game is able to submit scores and things that uh, will be accepted by the, uh, the master server. That's why if you're like running a build that you did off of GitHub or something, you'll if you go into the tournaments, it'll say like tournament scores will not count because <laughs> it's not blessed. So it's just, yeah, a security measure to try and make it harder for people to hack tournaments and things. <laughs> Talking about the first aid kit box thing. Went to green. Is anyone, uh, is everyone adjusted to green at this point? Does green feel okay or do people still miss red? Like I kind of... I feel Good. like I kind of still miss red, but I'm kind of used to green, I think. Okay, all right. So now come to Jenkins here. All right, push all servers, push all test packages. Okay, now I'm kicking off some processes that will build the game for bunches of platforms and then upload them to ballistica.net. So Provided that works, um, in like five minutes, we should see new stuff here. So let's see if that works. Ooh. I think, have I seen that before? That looks vaguely familiar. Uh, so what I'm going to show today is uh, Visual 332,008, GMT plus 530, BDFL, said chicky chicky boom boom. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Did I do that? Um, <laughs> is somebody hacking hacking me? What, what, what is even going on right now? Um, <laughs> anyway... Train of thought just derailed and went off a cliff at the moment there. Um, yeah, so what I've been working on, so when I haven't been uh, catching fish and stuff the last few weeks, I have been working on kind of a big uh, UI revamp. Um, so this was something, it wasn't technically part of 1.8, so it's yet another thing that's delaying 1.8 a little bit, but it's, a, it's, been, it's kind of a big part of uh, probably 1.9 or 2.0, so it needs to be done anyway. Um, and it's been something I've been working on for a few years now. Um, and 
So yeah, I spent the last few weeks working on that. And it's kind of like, it's midway done right now. So like a lot of the pieces are in place, but it's very ugly. Or not very ugly, but it's very, uh, lots of rough edges and things not working yet. But I'm going ahead and I'm pushing everything to GitHub and pushing test builds. So if people want to start playing with it, you can. Um, but anyway, I will just go ahead and show that now. So it's called uh, Toolbar Set Mode. Set OP. Okay, who's doing that? Like, what is that? Like, I'm, I'm super curious. Set Spaz is OP. Oh, uh, Gamma Option. If we want to rewrite that in, well, pro yeah, it probably won't be coming back because SDL is removing gamma from, uh, I don't think it's even part of the API anymore. Um, so, cause like modern systems, I think in a lot of cases they don't really have, or yeah, it's just something I think they couldn't implement it in a cross platform way. So I removed it from uh, bomb squad graphics options. We could still implement that. We would just have to do it like in shaders or something. So we could do it ourselves, but it's not It's not like on my priority list right now. That, that's something where, yeah, I don't know. Does anyone miss, do you miss gamma? Is, is anyone like finding a need for uh, gamma controls? Is the game too dark or anything like that? It's something where, you know, there's probably system level stuff where you can adjust screen brightness and gamma levels and things. So hopefully people can still do that if they need it, but it's not uh, it's not exposed in the game. Uh, ticket codes option. So there's there's still um, enter code, but it's been renamed slightly. Oh, this is the old version, I think. Yeah, this is. Oh no, this is the new version. So there used to be enter code up here. Now there's send info, which basically can be used for similar purposes. So if you just enter, <laughs> you can enter similar codes here. Uh, but by default, this will just like send me, by default, this is like a send info thing. So if you uh, just want to send a message here, or if I ask you to, you can send me some, some info about your game. Um, but it can also be used to submit codes and things. So, so yeah, basically, uh, enter code function is now just the send info function. Part of that too was to uh, clarify it. I kept getting in trouble uh, by like Apple in particular when I'd submit Mac app store updates, they would call out like, oh, hey, you can't allow people or, you know, the, like I kept having to like explain what that was to reviewers and things. So it, it kept being annoying. So that's partly why I like repurposed it, but it's basically the same thing now. So anyway, um, excited releasing on Steam. Heck yeah, I am super excited. I uh, still got my like Steam deck here. <laughs> um, tinkering around with that. Um, I really want to get the game going on that, uh, both like in the Windows version and maybe like the native Linux version since Steam, Deck's, Steam, Steam Deck is uh, Linux. But yeah, I uh, I mean, I'm excited about all the 1.9 stuff, 2.0 stuff. <laughs> it's just taking so long to get there, but I'm coding as fast as I can. Um, anyway, so what I was saying is I'm going to go ahead and uh, yeah, show what I've been working on. Actually, first, let's see how my builds are doing. Test packages. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is going to probably take a while. Um, I tweaked a few textures and... Oh, blessing. Oh, blessing. It shouldn't take too long. I tweaked a few textures in the game, and so when it recompresses the textures uh, for, for the Android versions, for whatever reason, it takes forever to recompress some of the big textures. It's like 10 or 20 minutes, <laughs> which is like kind of ridiculous. Um, so that might take a little bit to get those builds done. Um, Said nice hairstyle, Eric. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I probably look a little disheveled because all my clothes are still dirty from, uh, from my vacation. And uh, yeah, I probably need a haircut, whatever. This is kind of an old shirt. My favorite place outside to hang out in. Um, I like coffee shops. I don't know. Oh, on that note, actually, um, this 
I imagine this might affect coffee with Eric the next few weeks. I'm going to be moving. <laughs> Love it. Um, so I'm currently living down in Los Angeles uh, here in California. Uh, but most of my adult life, I've lived up north in San Francisco. Um, and I'm moving back to San Francisco in about two weeks. So, um, so you'll, you'll see a change in background. Um, but that might mean I, I'll see if I can get an internet up there and how things go. Um, I may have to like reschedule a coffee with Eric or something, we'll, but I'll, I'll get him going as soon as I can. Um. Said change the damn coffee cup. But I, but I love my, I love my coffee cup. Burp, burp, burp. All right. So anyway, um, on to, yeah, no, I know I need to, um, I should use some of my other coffee cups. This one is so, it's just cyber cup is so nice and simple and it keeps my coffee at just the right temperature. Oh, can't watch that one. I, uh, arcade machines. So yeah, I, for anyone who hasn't heard the story, that arcade machine back there, um, it was by a, a startup, I think based in Chicago, the, some of them were in California here, that, um, yeah, they were making arcade machines and they approached me about putting Bomb Squad on it. So I made kind of a, a slightly stripped down version of Bomb Squad for the arcade. Um, it was kind of neat. I would love to, like that's something where it would be really fun to, to kind of make a version of the game was like designed for an arcade, like, you know, more, I don't know, just something that just feels more like an arcade experience, you know, just something a little simplified where it's, you know, insert a coin to play kind of thing. Um, that would be fun. Um, unfortunately, uh, that the group that made that arcade, uh, they went, they didn't survive though. So it's a really nice bit of hardware. Um, and I kind of figured out how to hack it so I can, you know, put other games on it and things like that. So it, it's a nice piece of, <laughs> nice piece of hardware, like I said. But um, yeah, that would be, has anyone heard of, there's a, what is it? Called? Oh, Killer Queen. There's like this arcade game, at least for me, like here in California, there, there's a number of, of Killer Queen installs, at like different bars and places around, uh, at least around San Francisco. I'm sure probably in LA too. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's a couple guys that just made this game called Killer Queen and it's like a six player game. And so there's like these big arcade cabinets and apparently it got really popular, you know, like there's get togethers and things that seems like it would be kind of fun. Just like making an arcade, uh, like an indie arcade that got super popular and having get togethers for it and stuff. Why is there no rookie runaround? I don't remember. <laughs> Probably just when I was working on it, I probably, uh, it's just how it came out. Like I, uh, I was probably just trying to do like a random smattering of, of variety for levels and uh, yeah, just rookie, rook, rookie run. That's hard to say too, maybe that's why. Rookie run around, ugh, say that five times fast. Oh yeah, sorry if I'm missing videos. There's lots of, lots of posts right now, so I'm trying to. <laughs> trying to uh, hit as many as possible and also maintain my train of thought a little bit too. Aww. Said chin tap it damn damn. Oh, I guess I can just watch on YouTube. Okay, I'll watch on YouTube. Where'd it go? Jeez. Kind of scary. Is that a modified version of Doom Shroom or is that like a different level? Couldn't tell. Poor Eric has to deal with these videos. <laughs> no, I love these. It's it, such a variety of like random stuff. 
everything from uh, like very mundane to just like completely out there like psychedelic stuff. I feel like I'm on drugs watching these videos or something. Anyway, sorry, I keep uh, mentioning updates and then uh, getting, not distracted, I, I like responding to things, but. Um, so yeah, so some of you have maybe seen screenshots of this stuff before, but it's basically kind of like redesigning some of the UI to try and make things more consistent, like adding basically toolbars at the top and bottom to, to kind of show some consistent stuff just like resources or a store link or things like that. So anyway, I'll just bust it out and show how it's looking at the moment. Um, this is still very much work in progress, but you can see uh, here is the new menu as it stands right now. So it's kind of like a simplified main menu here and then things like settings and stuff like that or achievements or uh, like your league rank, those are all kind of just available from everywhere. Um, store is available here. Uh, there's this new thing, which I'm still working on it, but basically inventory. So I'm moving some stuff here, like player profiles. This will also show anything you've unlocked, uh, just like your list of characters and maps and whatever. I'm planning on moving that here. That used to be under the account section. Account section is way simplified now. It's just like, here's your account stuff. Ignore, like, none of these values are, are correct yet. <laughs> like, player name, that's just going to be, uh, you know, your account name and icon and stuff like that. Clan name, that, I put that there a long time ago as, like, a, you know, placeholder. But maybe someday we'll do clans, but not not yet. So um, ignore that part. That'll, that'll go away. Um, but, yeah. Oh, and then this. This is also under construction, but, like, an inbox. So I finally want to make, like, a way where... If you win a tournament or, you know, if there's some relevant thing, like someone friend invites you or whatever in the future, like that'll, you know, show up on the inbox. Um, and then, yeah, ticket count is always going to be visible here. Um, tokens also, and then, you know, if you want to buy tokens. Uh, this version will no longer have ticket purchases, so we're finally, tickets will be, uh, you know, in-game only. So as I mentioned, like that's kind of the what I want to move to is where... You basically just earn tickets easier by just playing uh, co-op games or whatever. Like any tournament here or probably probably any game you play here, the idea is that depending on how well you do or if you win or lose, you know, you get a treasure chest down here and then those treasure chests will open after a while or you can spend tokens if you want to speed that up. Um, and then that stuff will give you things like tickets and maybe other goodies or whatever. So, so that's kind of... Yeah, this is kind of a, a big jump, but it's kind of moving us towards the the new <laughs> the new economy and all that stuff that I was talking about. Um, I also made a bunch of like technical improvements. So uh, like the window system, if you've programmed your own like windows and things like that, it's a lot cleaner now. You don't before you had to kind of go in and code like the back button exactly where the back button would go. Um, so it was, everything was very hard coded, but now that's no longer the case. Like if you're making a window, the back buttons kind of handle automatically. Which means we can do lots of cool things like, you know, bring this window up and then replace it with this window and replace it with this window or this window. Um, so you can just bounce around a lot faster. Um, so it's, I'm kind of excited about it. it I think it, it, it clears stuff up nicely. Uh, party window is more available more often. Uh, yeah. So that's that. So this is the, I'm pushing this now. This is what should be in public. I haven't actually tested it, so if it uh, if it breaks violently, I apologize. Um, and then test builds should be on their way. Um, oh, whoops. Let's see if those are done yet. Created four minutes ago, created five minutes ago. Okay, those look like they're new. Uh, yeah, so anyway, this, yeah, this new UI is up and running there's a lot of things like i said that are very um, either temporarily disabled or probably just not working right so you probably run into stuff i'll show you the, sl the small version oh another another cool thing um, i redid the ui so it is widescreen now so it, on any modern phone you know a modern modern phones are pretty wide at this point or like they're they've gotten wider um, so for a long time, you'd have a lot of like wasted space on the side with Bomb Squad's UI, but now it's designed for wide phones, so you shouldn't have wasted space. So it should, you can see it takes up the, the whole width of the phone, which is nice. Oh, one other neat thing, there's um, there's a little, like a back button that's like shared, so you don't have to like hunt around for different back buttons. And 
uh, should be a little little faster to navigate. Um, burp, burp, burp. So we'll play. Burp. Uh, yeah. And let's see what else is new. Burp, burp, burp. Oh yeah, so um, so if you play around with this new version, which is still like I said, very much like an alpha version. So yeah, be aware that like none of these values are actually wired up yet. Like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Um, I will get that wired up as soon as I can. And you know, if you click on stuff like this, it's just going to say under construction. There's a number of things that will say under construction. So if you if you're trying out stuff and you see under construction, <laughs> just ignore that part. It'll I'll get it working as soon as I can. Um, or this that's under construction. This is under construction. Uh, but the, the stuff that's not under construction and, you know, aside from showing the wrong values here, that should be working. So if you want to give this stuff a whirl and let me know if, uh, if you see anything that behaves weird or seems to be broken. But my next goal is just going to be kind of like to, to wire up all these last parts and get everything here just working um, and then release this version. Also, it doesn't show the version here. I need to do that. I was going to try to do that before the, uh, the broadcast this morning, but didn't have time. So I'll probably have it show version number like down here somewhere, maybe. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's basically, this is what I've been working on for the past few weeks while not fishing. Um, and as I said, this is something where I was thinking I would probably do, do this big UI switch in version 1.9 or even 2.0, but because I just added the token stuff, um, it made sense to do it now, uh, just so because I wanted to get like for tokens to be meaningful, like it, we need to have treasure chests and all that, and for treasure chests, basically needed to switch to this this version. So, so like I said, it's it's delaying 1.8 ever slightly so so more, but it gives us you know some more features that will be uh, would have been coming anyway. So will Bomb Squad ever appear on Steam? Yes, that is the plan for 2.0. Uh, the 1.8, which is still in progress, is you know once this UI stuff is done, the last bits of 1.8 is asset packages, um, and then 1.9 will be all about the squad system. Um, squad system will just make it easier to play multiplayer stuff with your friends, and you'll basically come into here like this will be called squads instead of party. You'll invite people to your party or squad, whatever you call it, and then you can play games easily with them, or you know, like um, competitive games against other other squads, things like that. Kind of like just like modern matchmaking stuff. So that's 1.9, and then 2.0 is all about um, basically just polishing that up and then releasing on iOS and Steam. So those are the two big two big platforms for uh, 2.0 will be iOS and Steam. Oh, people are starting to write in bold. I must be missing something. Yes? Oh, check this dev discussion. Oh, is this for, I saw the logo transition, which was, that was cool. Let's see, is that what this is? Oh yeah, the little Zoomy logo. Yeah, good stuff. That um, it makes me wonder. Like, would that be fun to? Let's see. Get back over here. I know one thing I mentioned with uh, asset packages. It would be fun to like make alternate logos. Uh, you know, just some little simple thing that people could unlock easily. Uh, you know, like a, a slightly different bomb logo. But maybe that could be incorporated too. Is just like a slightly different uh, transition. Then people could like just make fun transitions like, you know, that, that spinny zoom in one or I don't know if you want to make one where all the letters fall in and bounce in weird ways. Like a, it could be fun to like use that as a, a test case to make like a plug-in based <laughs> main menu animation or something like that. Um, so if you want, well, I'll have to take a closer look at it. Um, I mean, you'll need to port it to this new system, which is, I mean, it's 
basically the same thing, but the you know, main menu.py is slightly rejiggered as you can see. Uh, so it just need to be, be updated for that. Bomb squad official realize when, what? Can you elaborate? What do you mean by that? Again, if I'm ignoring anyone, just keep posting. I will see it eventually. Oh, uh, that's a good question. When releasing it on Steam, will you add a Steam Workshop for publisher mods? I definitely, I mean, a, a big focus on mine with, uh, you know, Ballistico.net and like everything I've been working on, you know, workspaces and all that stuff, you know, I, I do want to make the game as moddable as possible and I'd love it to be possible for people to, yeah, sell mods or anything like that. So if Steam Workshop is a good way to do that, then I, I'd love to look into that. Um, I like... I'm of two minds, like one, Steam Workshop would be great, but the downside is if, if I lean into Steam Workshop, I worry that that's going to be something that won't apply to mobile. Uh, so I'd have to look at it and see how, how things would work. You know, I'd, what I want is, I want people to be able to, to make cool mods as easily as possible, um, hopefully, potentially make money off those mods that they want. Um, but I'd like those mods to be able to apply to all platforms if possible. You know, I, I want it to be like, if you make a cool mod, people can play it on Android, they can play it on Steam, they can play it on Switch if we ever get there, or whatever, you know. So something I'll just have to look into and take into account. Uh, but if Steam Workshop is an easy way to do that, then I, I'd certainly be happy to embrace that. I just need to like get the darn version on Steam and start <laughs> playing around with stuff. I was thinking, uh, do you guys do any, is Steam Early Access still a big thing? Like I was wondering if it would make sense to get the game up on like Early Access or something uh, just to start ironing out bugs or if I should not worry about that. So if anyone has any opinions on, on that. Oh yeah, I, I'm sure like on race, it, uh, I know that's probably a problem is like some people spawn a little bit behind others. Um, I'm not sure what the best solution, I mean, it happens in like real races too, but then I guess they adjust it where, you know, like the people in the back are like, I, I, how do they adjust that? And like real races, how do they account for starting positions? But if there's, if there's a way we can improve that, I'd be happy to. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm bouncing around a lot. Oh no. <laughs> I love the. <laughs> I love changing them to the stellar skeletons. That's, that's very. <laughs> it's horrid. I love it. Okay, sorry, I think I just took a link to the wrong place. Oh man. I need like a checkbox of, of things I haven't looked at. Ooh, is this like image-based lighting? That's cool. Oh, cool, you got it. Yay. Yeah, anyone uh, anyone who grabs the, um, the latest build, like I said, let me know if there's, I know there's some stuff missing and there's probably some, yeah, I, I have a big list of things I still need to wire up, but if you see something that is like subtly broken and it seems like maybe I wouldn't be aware of it, let me know. Um, like I said, that's, I'm, I'm hoping I, uh, this next two weeks is going to be nuts for me because I'm moving, so I have to pack everything up and, you know, I'm going to be very busy. Uh, so I, I don't think I'll be able to get this fully polished off super quick, but I'll be working as fast as I can. 
Um, but yeah, if anyone, yeah, if you spot problems and you want to submit uh, a PR for those, feel free also. Share some secret stuff in DMs. No, that would be wrong. I only do that by accident. Oh, that's cool. I like that lighting. It's very <laughs> natural looking. Or it looks like the lighting I had like on my kitchen counter when I was like making this stuff. Oh yeah, to explain clan name again, that is a stand-in that's that's not actually we're not actually gonna have clans at this time. <laughs> uh, at some point that would be fun to discuss, like what would be fun with some sort of clan things, but this is like this started as a mock-up. This this literally was like a Photoshop file like three years ago or something, just kind of like laying out what I thought would be like a good uh, a, a clearer like main menu revamp. Um, and so that, yeah, I, I wound up putting like player name, clan name. Um, this will basically just be your player name with your icon or if there's other like customization stuff with, uh, you know, how you can customize your account name appearance, like that'll show up here, which I do want to do. Like if anyone has noticed like on ballistica.net, you know, when you, you see your account name, it's got this goofy backing and like the icon is over here. And I was thinking it, it could be fun to have like other decorations or other, uh, you know, just ways you can like customize how your account name shows up. So I think the plan is that this will kind of reflect that, you know, this will, if you have cool little decorations on your, your account name, they'll, they'll show up here too. Or hopefully anywhere in the game where it shows your account name. But yeah, I was thinking of having uh, not like achievements, but some sort of like, I don't know, like medals or like something where there's like a small number of things that you can get if you if you do really cool stuff and then those can show up as, yeah, you know, like a, a row under your name on your account name or something like that. So if anyone has any good ideas there, or like games that do that sort of thing very well, like let me know. But I'd love to make it, uh, I know it's been, people have been stuck with that boring just V2 icon for, for <laughs> V2 accounts for a long time. So um, now that the game is mostly migrated over to V2, I want to uh, you know start making account names kind of pretty and exciting also. Which file contains this player name button, the top left one. Um, oh, so this stuff is all, there's this magical thing now. Um, it's actually, it's been around for a while. It's just been disabled, but it's under, let me, so Ballistica UIV1 widget. There's this magical thing called the root widget. And the root widget, it's basically like a special container widget that contains all this stuff on top and all this stuff on bottom. And it has a bunch of like magic that, uh, you know, like lets you auto hide and show different things depending on like which window is in front. Um, so that's that's what's responsible for drawing all this stuff. So you can see like, in the small version, it actually, it hides and shows a lot of stuff. So like if you're in the store, it only shows the things that are relevant to the store, which is tickets and potentially, uh, this is a whole other topic, but I was wanting to add some sort of like experience slash level system. So, you know, each season you can grind up experience and maybe that would let you, uh, maybe certain things you can only buy if you have, you know, reached a certain level or I don't know, there, there, there's something fun. There, there, there could be something fun there. It's just some sort of like progress, but not competitive, you know, kind of idea. Um, or yeah, if you come to settings, it hides a lot of that. Whoops account hides everything like this keeps everything shown burr, burr, burr. Um, so yeah any other feedback you have too like if any of these screens seem like weird or cluttered or hard to if there's something that's like hard to tap let me know um, I know this looks weird here this is the phone version um, it looks really weird doing the phone version on uh, on a computer. So like normally, yeah, the, the computer version would be UI scale large. So 
so yeah, this <laughs> this is how it'll normally look if you run it on a, a, a PC or Mac or Linux or whatever. So, uh, yeah. So there's three. Uh, anyone not familiar? There's three different UI scales. Basically, that that small one that I was showing you that that's what it runs on phones, because you know you need everything to be big so you can tap it. Uh, there's a medium UI scale that it uses for like tablets, and then large here is what it uses for computers, just because you know people usually have pretty big monitors. Um, yes, there's also uh, one interesting thing. Yeah, I, I totally forgot about this too. One thing I've been doing is if you hit tilde, you hit your Python console. There's now uh, a few different things here though too. One of them is app modes. So this, I've been talking about this a little bit, but an app mode is basically a way to switch the app into a completely different mode. So if you want to write a completely, you know, a total conversion or like a completely different thing that's not bomb squad, you can like make a different app mode for that. So. Right now, everything that's Bomb Squad is classic app mode. Uh, there's also empty app mode, though. Some of you have probably seen this. If you build the game like fully open source, you can make empty app mode, which is nothing but spinning potato text. Uh, but it basically, the, the point of that is to just kind of show you like what an app mode is. So it's like an, a blank slate. Um, but now, anyway, there's this thing so you can just like flip between them. Uh, makes it kind of neat to like test stuff. Um, there's also a UI tab which right now it's mostly not wired up. Like I'm gonna make it possible to switch UI modes like dynamically without having to restart. Uh, the other thing though, is you can show the virtual screen. So if you turn that on, you'll see this like lovely little red outline. And that kind of, that can kind of help you show, like when you're making a UI, what the game does is it basically, it tries, this is like the virtual screen. You should try to have all your stuff like within this screen. So if you're making windows or whatever, always try to keep it within the screen. You kind of see the game basically, uh, it makes every, like anything in that rectangle will always be visible. So you can see it kind of just like resizes things to fit that rectangle. So, um, so I thought it would be handy to be able to like show and hide that rectangle. So you can just see like, like if you have a big window, make sure your window doesn't, uh, you know, go outside this red bounds. That's more relevant with, let me so show you like small mode. So we got small UI mode. You can see on, it's, this is more widescreen. This is the phone version. So yeah, now you can kind of see here, like it just, you, you should try to keep, keep everything designed to like fit in that red rectangle. This looks super broken because like no one has a phone that's this tall. <laughs> so. Phones should usually be more like like this, somewhere in this vicinity. Um, that'll be weird if if you have like older phones with uh, that aren't quite as wide. You know, it'll probably look more like this. You'll have like a little bit of ugly empty space on the top and bottom. Um, so that's something that might need to be cleaned up a little bit. So if you have a phone that looks like really ugly <laughs> with the new version, let me know because uh, we can we can adjust individual windows to try to look better. Um, as needed, but it's kind of like, if you remember the old version, it used to look more like this where, whoops, you know, there'd be a lot of like wasted space on the sides. So now it's like, we'll, we'll have kind of the opposite problem where some phones might have wasted space on the top or bottom. Um, but anyway, that's that. And I was thinking, actually, at some point, it would be cool to add a portrait mode. Because uh, I was thinking, um, at some point, it could be fun to just do, like, a a weird mini, like, spin-off game or something. Uh, or just, like, a weird game mode where, like, you play, like, one-handed in portrait mode. Almost like a, you know, Clash Royale or games like that where it's, like, you know, kind of a casual game. But it could be built using, like, Bomb Squad stuff. I have no idea what that would mean, but... Um, but I may at some point because of that, I might add like a fourth mode, which is like portrait, just to like, if you want to make your UI look good in portrait mode, you know, for something, that's how you, how you would do it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is super cool. Bravo. <laughs> that is, 
man, yeah, stop motion is time consuming. So yeah, I applaud you. That is that is awesome. Play it one more time here. Let's go full screen. <laughs> using the legit sound awesome so yeah very very cool i that's that's how i got started in not in games but you know i was doing visual effects and animation i was working at pixar for a long time doing yeah visual effects for animated films um but that's how i got my start is like messing around with you know stop motion animation just like animating legos fighting each other and things like that so i yeah i have a sweet spot or you know, a special place in my heart for all that stuff. So super, super cool. I am a little jealous, like uh, modern, you know, people these days, uh, you know, it's, it's not easy. I mean, that, that stuff is so hard to do that kind of animation, but um, the, the one tricky part for me is, you know, I'm being old and all that, like, smartphones weren't a thing so there wasn't any like apps or anything to do stop motion so I, I had to like use my parents old like super 8 film camera and then send in the film to get developed and that would take like weeks and there was like one place in the country that still did it or something so it was it was very uh technically challenging at the time so i'm like i said i'm it's super cool that it's kind of easier now at least to be able to do it you know it's still so much work and it's it's very difficult to do that kind of animation you know just like moving the stuff around and taking the photos but um but it's cool that you can at least do it on a, a smartphone now i should show some of you guys like my old uh some of my old claymation stuff i'm trying to think if i have any handy uh, huh. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to look around for some sometime. But yeah, yeah, awesome stuff. Whoops. Ah. Ma. Did you make like super widescreen? Is this, uh... oh, you're probably in, uh... I guess you're in, I guess, phone scale with super widescreen? Like how, <laughs> how did this happen? <laughs> Is that, are you getting that like be by default? Or did you like resize the window or do something weird? Is it not, uh... Like Windows should come up with large UI scale by default. So you should, you should see this. Are you not seeing that? If that's the case, maybe it's broken. Um, oh yeah, okay, I need to, um, I'll have to take a look at that dev, t dev tools uh, UI scale thing. Um, that might be interacting in a weird way. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good bug report. <laughs> like, it looks like um, probably something I didn't take into account, or maybe that's always been broken, or I don't know. I'm not sure, but yeah, I might be. Um, I do plan to get these things working, where you can test the scales this way, um, and then I may take out the Dev Tools option um, if it's broken anyway. We'll see. And I was I was thinking maybe for uh, at least for. For like Mac and Windows and Linux, maybe it would make sense to have an option to switch between like medium and large, uh, just with the GUI. That could make sense. Like I, I don't think it would make sense to allow people to switch to. Sp I, I just mean like normal non-developer types. Um, you know, it could make sense to have like a graphics option to switch between medium and large here. Um, we'll see. Just for, you know, if someone's playing on like a small laptop or something, it might make more sense to have like medium mode than large. I don't know. Bomb Squad screensavers. Can you, uh, tell me more about that. Like what kind of screensavers did they do? Is it like gameplay or is it just, 
Yeah, like, or is it just like Minecraft related stuff that is made into a screensaver? Oh, okay. Is that what you're talking? Yeah, there are stress tests. Hopefully, they still work. I haven't tested them with the new UI. Let's let's see. We'll do some live testing here. Um, I always have to think like, where'd the settings button go? It's like, oh right, it's down here now. All right, stress tests. So far, so good. Okay, all right, it seems to be working. So yeah, so there's this stuff, these stress tests. There's also, uh, there's also the option for, um, burp, 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 burp. oh yeah, show demos when idle. Um, that's just like, if you leave your screen untouched for 30 seconds, then it'll basically show you like the stress test. Except it's a slightly cleaner version where I think it doesn't show like test input connected and stuff like that. It's meant to be a little bit more pretty looking. Um, one other thing I should mention that I'm hoping to fix this today, but right now there's no restoring. So if you come into single player co-op, play a game, whatever, and then you end the game, it'll take you about out to the main menu. Um, it should take you to this screen. Um, I'll get that wired up. The, the cool thing about it is it's much more generalized to where um, with the new menu system, it can basically remember any of these windows. So no matter where you go, um, when you come back out of a game, it should put you back where you were, I think. I should be, yeah. Um, it's just that's not wired up at the moment. Right now it resets everything. So like I said, you come out of the game and you're back at the start. So. But that's that will be fixed. I um, I need to make an official like to do list of everything I still need to wire up for this version. I don't even remember what version this is. Um, I guess I should check. <laughs> like I said, that's one thing is I need to get the version number showing up here. I'll probably need to do it like down here or something because I can't really have it show up here anymore. Also, the news at the top. I need to either redo the news or just take that out. I haven't really been using it for anything much, but. For the small version of the game, there's really like not room for it anymore. Like for a small version, there is, yeah, there's really not much room for news up here. So I, I guess I could put it over here or over here or whatever, but that remains to be seen. Uh, burp, burp, burp. Have fair spawns. Um, There's probably, I mean, we can certainly, if there's individual spawn modes that are causing you to fall instantly, we can fix that. That's certainly a, uh, that's just a, you know, a problem with like the spawn area being defined too big or too offset or something. So if there's one that's very per, like problematic, um, if you can just show me a image of which one causes you to fall a lot, we, I can shrink that a little bit. Um, check this bug of... In terms of getting spawns more fair, like the winning team spawns better and stuff, that's certainly something we could add. Uh, it's not on my to-do list right now, but if you want to, um, I can point you at where the code is if anyone wants to you know, play around with that. So, uh... Yes, there will be. Ch <laughs> there are chests at the bottom. I, I, they probably look giant on the small version. They're pretty small on the large version. If you think they're a weird size, let me know. Um, you know, just trying to make everything clickable. This also, to be blunt, like this is where the game will make all of its money. So, like, I need to have that somewhat prominent too. So, uh, gotta gotta pay the bills so I can keep working on this thing. You know, that's how life works. Okay, are you just talking about like the small version? It's, again, I know it looks probably ridiculous on, on this screen here. Everything looks like huge. Um, if that seems that way on a phone, let me know. I feel like it looks pretty normal size on a phone, like these buttons, these buttons, and these things. Um, 
But if you do feel like it's wasting too much space or something, I can shrink it. So like, I'm happy to take feedback, you know, there. Um, let me get it wired up and get everything like functional and then we can put it through its paces. And if you do feel like these things are too big, we can, we can certainly shrink them down a little bit. Um, but yeah, it is, like I said, it's kind of a bad way to look at a game. Um, <laughs> A giant phone window on a, a big screen just because everything looks like way too big or you know it's hard to judge things but once you play it on like a smallish phone then it, it feels a bit different how to switch UI to other UI scales um, there will be I mean you can do it in code there is I mean that I got to take a look at that that's I'll put that on my to-do list like the dev tools thing I think that basically it does the same thing as setting it in code, but I'm not sure why it's it's behaving wonky. Um, if you go come down here, but I'll I'll take a look at that. Um, in the future, like I said, if you come bring down the the console, like this will be probably the way to switch it, at least temporarily for like testing things. Uh, the plan will be like if you're building a UI and you want to make sure your UI works at all scales, you're probably like show virtual screen and then flip between these three and make sure everything is like in the screen and then you can hide it and close it. So that's that's the plan for, for most dev stuff. Um, the question is like, if you wanna switch it, do, do people, will people wanna switch it like permanently or is this more for like testing purposes? Cause that, that is for testing purposes. Uh, like I'm building that for myself. So if I'm making a UI, you know, I can just come in here and you know, poke these buttons and test my UI. Um, but if you're wanting to, you know, like permanently switch your game to like medium mode or something like that, like I said, then I feel like we should put it under graphic settings or something. But I don't know if that's something that like people would use or want. Right now, uh, like I said, you can either hard code it in, you know, in the scripts or there's an environment variable. Um, I'll show you where it's set. It's, if I can remember. <laughs> Uh, that would be in, um, oh, whoops. That would not be in the master server code. I believe that's on the base UI. That's like a common UI thing that's for, for all UIs. Let's see. Yeah, so when it creates this like UI class, um, you can see it's getting an environment variable here, be a UI scale. And then it's just like initializing this UI scale based on that. So that's probably the, so if you can set environment variables, like that's how I do it. You can see I'm doing it that right here. BA UI scale equals large, make, see, make. So if you want to test at different scales, you can do large, medium, small. BA UI scale, medium. Burp, burp, burp. Um, but like I said, you probably, you could hack this. <laughs> just come in here and like hack this code if you're compiling the game yourself. Um, and then I need to see what that like dev version, the dev window does. It might just be setting the environment variable. I'm not sure. Okay, so these are more just like... Is there a... I'd be curious, like how does one... Is there like a common way to make screensavers for like Windows or something? Can you make like plugins? Or is this just like an app you have to launch? Like the Mine Minecraft screensaver app? Or is it something where, you know, you, you drop a plugin in there somewhere and then you can like select that screensaver within Windows? Um, Either way, it could be fun to do, <laughs> but like I said, that's that's another one of those things where it wouldn't be on like my my to do the top of my to do list certainly. I feel like I can't, you know, I, I have to do some fun stuff, uh, you know, sometimes just to keep it interesting. You know, I can't be doing like boring network coding all the time, or I get bored. <laughs> um, but I, I'm trying to prevent myself from <laughs> get, going down too many really deep rabbit holes, like making screensavers and stuff. I feel like would qualify. I'm trying to avoid that until after 2.0. Then maybe I can I can do that a bit more. All right, what do we got here?
Actually, let me just open this over here, and then we can... Whoa. Deadpool. <laughs> Has everyone seen Deadpool, by the way? I finally saw it a few weeks ago. I went and saw it with my dad. <laughs> it was fun. I love a little, like, gummy look. That's fun. Like this little dude. Oh, it's the Android dude. That's awesome. Points. It makes it feel like 2016 again. I guess. It, Maybe it's part of getting older or something. I feel like I have less of a sense of like what's popular, what's changed, you know, pop culture and stuff in the last ten years than I used to. Like if you said, if you asked me like, what does 2016 remind you of? I'd be like, I have no idea. <laughs> That's on my mental to-do list. I'd love to have like a zombie character. We need a zombie character. These are some fun designs. I love this. Oh yes, I love the music. That shows up in the game in one place. Has anyone noticed? Hopefully. Yeah, Trollolo Man. There's uh... He's in one uh, game sound effect. Can anyone, a little trivia, can anyone point it out? Oh, there it is. Okay, so yeah, these two stop. <laughs> I love like Trollolo remixes. Oh yeah, there, yeah, the achievement sound effect. You got it. I'll see if I can find that real quick. Uh, whoops. Assets, badata, audio. I'm gonna pause this for just a moment. True little guy. Stronghold Crusader? No, I don't think I know that game. Oops, sorry. Yeah. I would love to uh, get some updated sound effects for the game too, maybe for scene V2 or something coming up. Get some yeah, better explosion, more impactful sounding stuff. Whatever. What? <laughs> I heard something that sounded Starcraft-ish. 
Yeah, that one. That's. I feel like that's a sound effect in StarCraft. I was playing. Um, so like I said, I was at the. I was up in Minnesota with my dad. Um, you know, helping out with the cabin up there and stuff like that. And so we play a lot of StarCraft in the evenings. That used to be what we do all the time. So I was getting back into the original OG StarCraft. It's good times. Yeah, I feel like I haven't had the proper experience of just like trying to play in a crowded lobby, like jumping in the middle of a game. New menu, uh, new menu is coming in one, it's not even 1.8, it is coming, this next version. Um, I'm like going for it, I... So 1737 will have the new menu. I know it's very, uh, it's a very like non-major version to, to just roll out a completely new menu, but like I said, I really, uh, I wanted to get tokens in there so we could do asset packs. I wanted to get the new menu in there so that tokens make sense. Um, so this just seemed like a good time to do it. So yeah, the new menu will be this this next minor update will have a totally new menu. <laughs> uh. But it's I mean the uh, functionality is not really changing too much aside from, you know, tickets not being purchasable and tokens being purchasable, but um but yeah, the new menu will be in there. So that's why I am trying to scramble as much as I can just to to get everything working as quick as possible because I don't want to I don't want to wait for a bajillion years to to release 1737. Uh so there's a few like peach bits of functionality I gotta get in there. I mean, aside from wiring the UI up, I need to implement like the the inbox system and basically the the treasure chest <laughs> system. So like the timers and stuff. I have to like have it talk to my server and all that. What the heck? Zombie horde minigame. I do think like. I've had that idea, like zombie horde type mini games, which is like defending against. That's why it would be good to have like a proper uh, zombie character too. Just make it easy to make like zombie horde mini games. Let's play again. Or yeah, I'm sure there. I'm sure there's good ones already, but yeah. Or we could just incorporate any. Uh, did a banana just fly by? <laughs> Uh, will that be moved? We could probably move, if it's going to be in the way a lot, I would suggest we move the FPS counter. We could just like move it up or something. Um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like priority should be having stuff, you know, where it makes sense for players. Uh, but yeah, if, this is kind of ugly, so. Like, it could make the FPS counter smart enough to... Well, it might just be better to have... Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what the right answer here is. <laughs> I don't want to, like, move stuff... Or I get, well, I guess maybe we could move, move this stuff out of the way if the FPS counter is active. That's an option. Uh, when 1.8? <laughs> as soon as possible. As soon as this UI version... As soon as this, uh, yeah, this UI revamp is done, then I will get back to finishing asset packs. So, like I said, this is a... Uh, the little side quest that popped up, but I think it's good to have it done. Um, but yeah, it is delaying 1.8 a little bit longer. So 1.8 is definitely like the the longest I've made you guys wait for a, a significant update. Aside from 1.5, <laughs> that was what like years. Yeah, sorry, I let the window go, go under. Ah. Uh, it's, I mean, if people want to, well, it's a tricky thing because it's, uh, Trying to maintain any sort of compatibility is hard. <laughs> um, like anytime I'm, you know, trying to keep stuff compatible, it, it's good to have things be backwards compatible, but it also kind of inhibits 
making changes. So it's, uh, you know, it's probably not realistic to try to have the game support old mods, unfortunately. You know, I can try to, um, if you get a mod updated for this current version, I'm, I'm optimistic that it won't be too hard to keep it working in the future because like all the, the existing stuff, it's, you know, as squads mode comes out, like all this existing stuff, I'm gonna start referring to it as like Bomb Squad Classic. You already see that name pop up in some places. Like if you go to app modes, you can see classic app mode. Um, when squads mode happens, there'll be like probably BA squads dot squad app mode or something like that. So, so all, if you can get something running under the existing system with like the classic app mode and all this stuff and scene V1 and um, yeah, if, Things could be ported to work in this system. They probably would stay working, or it would easy, be easier to keep them working. But unfortunately, it's probably unrealistic for me to, to make the game support old mods because you know a lot has changed. So it's the the best option there is probably just to bust out an old version of the game and you know run the mod there when possible. There's a lot of stuff. You know, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with it, there's a lot of old versions still. Whoops, that's not Safari. You know, a lot of old versions available uh, come to downloads and then archives. You know, lot, lots of old stuff here, um, which hopefully can help with running old mods or something. Um, but yeah, I, it's kind of a tricky give and take trying to support old stuff while also moving the game forwards. Yeah, it would be bummer for those to be forgotten. Um, like, yeah, it'd be great. I don't know if, if it'd be possible to do like a, a remaster or something to, to update them for the modern system or something. Because fundamentally not too much stuff has changed at a low level, like the low level nodes and things like that. Those are largely the same as they've been since 1.4. I mean, the fact that you can still join 1.4 servers, that kind of shows you that, that things haven't changed that much fundamentally. Um, it's just a lot of, yeah, UI changes and Python level changes and stuff. Oh, you translate? Okay, there there could be, uh, yeah, some translations I need to check. I'll try to do that after the broadcast here. Are you going to add moderators to the game? Yes, I. this is something I'd love to, uh, I'd love to talk about or, you know, get, start working on a system to do this, like basically appointing people as mods. Um, just need to figure out how that works. <laughs> uh, like if you come in here, there's actually, Ran a bit of trivia. If you haven't seen it, you can actually search for accounts now. Like if you want to look look me up, look Efro account tag, you'll find me. So it says account type admin, super cool. Uh, the most account types is just like regular. So uh, there might be like a moderator account type or something. You know, we can uh, appoint different accounts as being moderators, and you get like certain special powers or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as what that means, that's kind of like up in the air. But I think it would be good. I just, if you enjoyed watching the video, leave a it, yeah, it's just a matter of like how to. Uh, to it's a question for me, like how to uh, assign moderators and how do you, you know, if someone stops playing the game, do they like, lose moderator status or can moderators appoint new moderators? You know, like what is the what is the best way to keep it uh, updated? Aww. When will my account get those features? Well, I probably, uh, <laughs> admin accounts on Ballistica will probably just be me unless something changes, uh, just because admin's like lots of stuff. Um, but like I said, I, I probably will add a new level like moderator or something like that, that that some more folks will get. And then, let's see. Yeah, sorry if I'm talking over the, I mean, for those long videos, I kind of have to talk over it. I can't, uh, you know, we did use up like half the, a lot of time otherwise. Cool videos though. But yeah, I, I don't know, in general, I, I do want to get to the point where 
you know, hopefully things are stable enough where if someone writes a cool mod pack like Bomb Dash or something that it can stay working for as long as possible. Uh, so that's, you know, a lot of a lot of the reasoning by, you know, behind things like uh, feature sets and things like that that I've, I've talked about a lot, I know. Uh, just stuff where, you know, like there's all these different feature sets, UIV1, scene V1. Um, you know, once like scene V2 comes around, then any mod packs that are still using scene V1, they'll still work because scene V1 will still be there and it won't be changing anymore. So in a way it'll almost be a more attractive to use older stuff. So this, this question comes up a lot. Will the game ever have some sort of lore? Um, and my my answer so far has been that it's like I, I kind of treat the game right now like Nintendo characters where like Nintendo characters, you know, the, I've read something where Nintendo treats their characters like actors where it's like they, they don't have a single backstory or something. They'll show up in different games with like different stories kind of, you know, uh, Mario will be fight, fighting Bowser sometimes. Other times he's playing tennis with him, <laughs> you know, it's um, so I kind of want to treat it like that, but it, it could be cool to have. I think it would be cool to have like a particular league or you know campaign or something that would have like a story attached. Like that would be a lot of fun. But I do kind of want to keep the characters from having. Uh, that's kind of a reason to avoid giving the characters like backstories or you know very specific. It's similar to like how, why it's, I think it's good to avoid giving them like special powers, because it keeps them a little bit more like a, a blank canvas. So then if we do make a a, a campaign or a game mode or something that does have like very specific special powers or backstories or things like that, then it there's a lot of freedom there, you know, like you can kind of, it's almost like a multiverse kind of thing, you know. It's like in this multiverse, like Spaz is an auto mechanic that, you know, his pet Chihuahua was killed by a hitman and now he's, you know, <laughs> like going to avenge his pet Chihuahua. I don't know. how VS Mini looks on phone. Uh, okay, so it looks like, yeah, you might have, your phone is probably not as widescreen. I, I'll have to, I can take a look at that. Um, it is interesting. There's like, one second. So I'm guessing your phone is there's all these like different aspect ratios. Your phone is probably more like, like this is kind of an older aspect ratio where it's, whoa, camera, go, <laughs> get it under control. Um, but then like the more, like more recent phones have even, are even wider, like that's a Pixel 7. It's like 1.9, I forgot what the exact ratio is, but uh, modern iPhones or most flagship Android phones right now, it's like one point and let's just do um, oh whoops 16 doesn't exist yet Oops. yeah 19.5 to 9 um, older phones had more like a it's something that wasn't quite as wide so so yeah I should take a look at that because yeah this doesn't look good so I should adjust this a little bit um, but like I said, that's kind of how it will be on the new version, unless this looks, unless a lot of people think this looks really bad. <laughs> or I can also maybe adjust it to where uh, you uh, maybe this UI could like adjust itself a little bit in this case. But basically, this is what I was talking about where, um, oh wait, actually, let me think. Wait, 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 wait. So if you're seeing this on a phone, something might be broken. Um, you shouldn't be seeing this on a phone. Because yeah, on the, the phone version should be, like small UI mode now, uh, yeah, like you should be seeing this, where like you have the toolbars, oh wait, wait or um, you're in settings. Yeah, you should see like this special uh, funky back button and stuff like that. So this might be, accidentally somehow using like medium UI mode. 
uh, which is not right. So yeah, I'll, I can take a look at that. I haven't, <laughs> truth be told, I have not actually tested this on my Android phone, so it might, uh, it might be totally broken right now. Uh, all the under construction stuff, I mean, I'm just gonna, man, this camera keeps like zooming in on my face, like super dramatically. Um, I'll probably be just submitting patches over the next week, uh, filling in all these things, probably one at a time. It probably won't be like one single big patch. It'll probably be like, like this fills in the XP button. This fills in, this makes player name show up correctly. Oh, whoops. TV mode, okay. Pink circle with number 12. So that is, uh, there's a chance I might take that out, but I'd like to wire it up. That's basically XP. So my plan was to, um, right now, in addition to, you know, you can earn tickets and trophies and whatever. You know, trophies is basically, as everyone knows, that's just like competitive kind of like how many tournaments you've won. Uh, that's more like a competitive number. Uh, but XP would be just more like how much you've played, how many, uh, so you just, you'd get XP slowly, like anytime you play a game or win a game or whatever. And then I'm not sure what we'd use that for. <laughs> it would just be something I think it could be fun to play with. Like maybe, I thought like maybe certain stuff in the store, like you can only unlock once you reach certain levels or things like that, just to make some things more exclusive. Um, but that's still not entirely for sure. I might just temporarily hide this or take this out for now until we come up with a better, better reason to have it. But I'd kind of like to wire it up and just see see what we can come up with. Um, so yeah, so that's, yeah, basically, this is like your competitive ranking. This is just like how much you've played this season, basically. And then of course, this is stuff you earn in game. And then this is, uh, you know, basically paid paid currency. So, so yeah, just trying to come up with as simple and consistent of a, a, a set of stuff that's basically visible at all times. Uh, yes, ticket purchases are gone. You can still, I think you can hack it in this version. Um, probably do, there's probably some way like BA based uh, purchase. I don't know. Uh, the old UI is probably still there, maybe in some functional form, but but yeah, I want to transition. That That's the plan. That's been the plan all along is to transition away from ticket purchases. Um, and I've rambled about this a number of times, but basically the reason is that it's really, turns out it's really tricky to balance a currency to make it available like in the game, um, but also make it purchasable. I mean, it's possible and companies do it, but it's much easier to just have one currency that's like, you know, you can get this currency easily anytime you play a game or whatever. And that's that's how it'll be with tickets. It'll, it'll be more easy to get tickets. It also probably won't cost tickets to enter tournaments. I'll probably change that too. Those will probably be, um, I'm guessing, just free to enter. Uh, the only thing that will ever cost cost money is to like speed up opening these these boxes. So that's kind of like, and a lot of games, you know, function that way. So that's that's kind of the plan. Is there will no longer be weird payments to enter tournaments. It's just like, if you want to uh, <laughs> play a bunch and and skip waiting for your stuff, then you can just like pay a few tokens here and there for that. Um, or watch ads too. So that's kind of like, like I said, I'm just shifting how the game uh, makes money to hopefully just simplify it and then also just make it easier for me because I'd love to have more ways where you can earn tickets. Uh, I'd like, it'd be great to be able to earn some tickets just playing the campaign or uh, doing practice and getting good scores and things like that. So before I was conflicted because like I didn't want to give too many tickets away because then people wouldn't buy ticket packs and I need people to buy ticket packs so I can, you know, pay my power bill and stuff like that. So so this will, I, I feel like this will uh, just make it a little easier design-wise. I mean, there will still be, if you want, there will still be ads to unlock, unlock chests and things like that. Um, and there will probably, like, there's also like the, in, the between game ads will still be there, but I will make that easy to get rid of. Um, my plan for now is, I'll probably put a little notice here, like if you buy any token pack that will disable ads for the rest of the season or for permanently or something like that. Basically, right, one of the things that Pro does right now, um, 
Pro is still around, by the way. Pro will probably go away at some point, but for right now, it's sticking around. Um, it'll probably, if there's ever something like a, you know, like a season pass sort of system or something else that could replace it, then it'll go away, but for now, it won't. Um, so for now, yeah, you can still use Pro to get rid of, um, you know, between game ads. But like I said, I want to make that easier also. I want to make it like if you buy a 99 cent ticket token pack, that'll probably get rid of ads too, I think, at least for now. So, um, but, but yeah, the, the question that comes up too is like, you can still buy Pro, it still has its same benefits. Um, but some of the other benefits... Like the only thing that's changing is that some pro benefits will be uh, available to everyone now. Like if you come in and check, where's the downloads change log? You see the first the first few things in the change log is playlist customization no longer requires pro, soundtrack customization no longer requires pro. Um, there's probably something else I'm forgetting. <laughs> if there's anything else that requires pro, uh, remind me because <laughs> I might want to turn that off, or I might want to make it you know free for everyone. So that's. That's my hope, basically, with all this stuff. I'm also getting rid of all the nag screens. They might still be in there now, but the ones that pop up and say like, hey, do you want to buy Pro? <laughs> Otherwise, you have to wait. <laughs> um, I want to get rid of that. So, um, yeah. So hopefully the game will be less annoying in some ways, uh, even if you don't buy Pro. It won't be nagging you to buy Pro. Uh, yes, this is... I know, uh, the, yeah, the existing existing set of characters and maps. It's very out of date. Um, so there will be more, more news on this coming. Uh, that, that is basically the big feature of 1.8 though, is making asset pack downloads uh, so that I can add new characters and new maps and things like that without forcing people to upgrade or to update. And uh, you know, it basically technically makes it a lot easier for me to add new stuff. So that's, that's the plan once 1.8 hits is some fun new stuff. <laughs> It's just, I apologize, it's taken so long to get to 1.8, and this whole UI revamp is, you know, delaying it a little bit longer, but getting there. But yeah, that, that, that stuff will be coming after probably 1.8 launches. Like, 1.8 itself will have the ability to do, uh, like, asset downloads and things. So then, once everybody starts to get 1.8, then I can be releasing new characters and new maps and things, and everyone will just automatically be able to use those without having to, you know, update the game, which I'm very excited about. Um, keeping any color you like your characters. Oh yeah, um, yeah, I should make that available to everyone. That's a good point. So um, I'll try to remember to do that, but please remind me if I forget. So basically anywhere in the code that you see like has pro features, <laughs> there's like a check, like if this user has pro features, then do something. Um, I basically want to yeah get rid of that code and be like just give that to everybody now because um, like i said pro pro should be going away so though uh, for the time being i mean it basically it's still it's probably a good value i mean it gives you a decent number of tickets and unlocks a bunch of stuff so it's it's not bad to have that around for now it's like a starter pack essentially kind of thing um but yeah a few of these things like being able to change the soundtrack or uh, playlists like that, that is coming to everybody now. So it's losing a few of its benefits, but it's still, um, if you do want to buy pro, like all this stuff or yeah, the, the stuff that it unlocks is still there. And for now, disabling ads is still a benefit. Um, so yeah, yep, yep. But yeah, at some point pro will probably go away. Um, so yeah, technically I should, yeah, the disable all ads is, that's still relevant. Change the soundtrack, that's not relevant because everyone gets that. Everyone should get this. Um, and yeah, this stuff is still relevant. I also want to, I don't know why I didn't do this before, make infinite onslaught and infinite runaround. Uh, those should be purchasable here. <laughs> I'm not sure why I didn't do that and I only made them part of pro. Um, so I'll try to fix that.
custom assets for this. Uh, well, this will be, uh, there'll be more coming on this with 1.8. It will be possible to host parties with custom assets and have everyone joining the party like automatically download that, download those assets. Um, there'll be a few limitations there. Like if you're making assets that are not, like if you want everyone in the world to be able to automatically download your stuff, like there's, there'll be some sort of like moderator pro process or, you know, approval thing or something. Just because I don't want to, I don't want the um, custom games list to be filled with, you know, things with Nintendo assets and stuff like that. Uh, games get in trouble for that sort of thing, so I want to be a little careful. But, you know, if, if people want to make some assets and, like, play games between their friends, like, you'll be able to do that. You'll just have to do, like, mark your friends as testers or something like that, and then you can, do, like, share whatever you want. So, more details on that stuff coming, but I do have a, a, a system in place. Oh yeah, this is, yeah, the ad, ads will not be on PC, I don't think. One thing I, I learned recently that was kind of interesting is uh, Steam apparently does not allow ads uh, as part of like their monetization, like you, uh, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> I mean, nobody likes ads. I don't like ads. I mean, I put them in there because like I said, I have to, got to pay the bills, you know, so it's like, it, it, that works pretty well uh, to make money from the game for you know, there's always going to be some people who play the game and never never buy any ticket packs or token packs or anything like that and so ads is a way to you know make some money um but but yeah i don't i don't like ads but yeah apparently on steam uh that's against terms of service it's like you can't have a game that that is ad supported like you have to um only use in-app purchases and stuff if you have like a free to play steam game so so there won't be ads on uh on the steam version so the last time I looked, at least when I, I looked on like the Mac version, I was looking for like ad networks for that version. And it doesn't look like there was even any options for like being able to show ads for, you know, like PC or Mac games. Maybe that has changed now or maybe I didn't find it. But um, So, yeah, everything you're talking about here is... Uh, yeah, people with custom maps, custom images, custom bobs and cobs and all that stuff. Um, it will it will be possible to host that and have people join that uh, join that server and automatically download that stuff. Like I said, it just you'll either have to um, probably get it approved, which probably just means like running it by me and like showing me what's in it and be like okay, <laughs> um, so I can get it like whitelisted or whatever. Um, or the other option is probably have anyone joining your game be listed as like developers. So like if you're playing with friends, that that's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, this please ignore this terrible, ugly UI right now. <laughs> this giant window with one button. That's why I was trying to trying to add under construction uh, notices to everything that is clearly not done yet. Or the fact that like inventory is capitalized, that means I haven't like added a translation entry for it and things like that. So. You can, you can kind of see how the, the cheese is made, <laughs> so to speak. See what the stuff looks like while well, it's like in progress. Yuck, 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 yuck. Or all these things, or not that, like this stuff, or that stuff, or that stuff. Or like this. I put a percentage here for like showing your achievement percentage, but it's not wired up. It's just I pulled that number out of, <laughs> out of thin air, 34%. Penguin torso. I'll have to take a look at that. Um, I did see if it if it fixes that. That's cool. Though the one thing is, um, if <laughs> I was wondering if I could get that as like an OBJ file, if possible, I'll have to. I can. I'll try to respond to this. Just because in my old uh, in my asset pipeline, like all the asset sources are like OBJ files or you know Maya files or whatever. So. I prefer to keep the sources available, uh, you know, so I can't really accept like Bob files directly. I could, I, I, I guess I should write a translator to, to take Bob files and pull them back into OBJ files for if I need to do that, but I just haven't done that. <laughs> Someone in the community probably did. Never a Brazilian. I'd love to add a Brazilian character. Is there, I don't know. Um, 
like I'd love to add some characters that are kind of like places where the game is popular, like Brazil. Like it'd be fun to have like a Brazilian character. Like what is something cultural and like what would be a cool character to see? But yeah, there's places like, oh man, it's zooming in on my face again. Ah. Ah, I, unfortunately, I think I probably, well, I, I guess if you want to host, I can join right at the end of this, but it's coming up to the two hour mark and I probably, there's so many broken things, I want to get back to coding, but I could hop in for a quick game if we want to wrap things up soon. Oh, questions and suggestions. Oh, questions and suggestions. Oh, burp. So this is, it's an interesting uh, idea with the gold pass. So if anyone's not familiar, the gold pass is basically for the new stuff, there's tokens, you know, the standard four pack sizes, and then there's a gold pass, which basically just gives you infinite tokens. So it's just like turning the game from free to play into premium, you know, it's just like you buy it, buy it once and there's never any more uh, stuff you can buy <laughs> at that point. Um, but yeah, one, that is interesting ideas, having the gold pass give other benefits like that, but I kind of, part of my design for the gold pass is that, or my, well, like one of my rules for myself is like the gold pass should not, it's like an alternate way to play the game. Like if you wanna, if you wanna play the game by just buying tokens when you need them, like that is one valid way to play the game. Um, I mean, it's, you know, you don't even have to buy stuff. Like if you wanna play and never buy anything, that's totally fine too. That's, you know, it's a free to play game. So you're, you should be able to do that. Um, but basically tokens and the gold pass, they're just like two different routes you can go. And you know, the, the tokens route is if you want to like pay as you go. And the, the gold pass route is if you just want to like pay once and then you're done, you know, just like buying a game on Steam or something. Um, but I don't really want to make one of those routes like better than the other, you know? So that's kind of a design goal of mine is, you know, if someone buys the gold pass, that's cool and they never need to buy anything else again, but I don't kind of want to I don't want to push people into that route, you know, I don't want to, uh, in, in a way, I kind of almost prefer if people just buy tokens, because then it's like pay as you go sort of thing. And if you're, I've mentioned this before, like if someone is playing the game for 10 years and finding enjoyment in it and, you know, buying new stuff in the game and buying token packs occasionally, like I would prefer that because it might, over time, you know, that might add up to more than a gold pass. So, um, so like it benefits me in that, you know, potentially it, it's more, you know, people that really enjoy the game, then, you know, I can still make money off of them and still, uh, you know, it's a mutually beneficial thing. Um, so in a way, like I want to design the game so that buying tokens is, you know, the comfortable way to do it. Um, but like I was saying, yeah, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want it to be like, there would be like one right way to play the game. Like I don't want the gold pass to be like, first class citizens and token people to be second class citizens or vice versa. You know, I don't want to have characters in there that you can only buy for a bajillion tokens, but you can't buy with a gold pass. I mean, a gold pass gives you infinite tokens, so I guess that would be impossible. But uh, anyway, I'll stop rambling on that. But I hope that my point is I, I kind of don't, I want to make gold pass and token people equal, you know? So as cool as it would be to have uh, gold pass exclusive stuff, I kind of want to avoid it for the most part. How do you get the idea of playing with a Mac? You mean like, why do I use a Mac? Or what are, what are you asking? I've just been a Mac person for a long time for development and stuff, I like them. Um, I like PCs, I like Unix, I like Linux, I like Android, I don't know. I am happen to be a kind of an Apple geek, but it's not like a religion for me or anything like that. Well, hello, Death Stew. Oh yeah, and whatever, uh, that's also another guideline. I don't want anything to be pay to win. <laughs> um, any of this free to play stuff, like I, I want it to be all about unlocking characters, uh, you know, speeding up weights, little, you know. I feel like there's there's uh, non sleazy ways to do free to play. So if, please, if any of you feel like any of this is ever going down sleazy routes or anything feels pay to win, please let me know. Cause I, I really don't want that. Like I took out a lot of the stuff like the, um, you know, the continues that used to be in there that 
you know, it made a little extra money, but it felt a little sleazy. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I used to be a full-time Linux person back in the day. Uh, I had, yeah, I think actually when I started coding Bomb Squad, I think that I think I was running Linux uh, as my main main daily driver, which I still I love Linux. Uh, I feel like. I feel like the only downside of Linux is I, I was too tempted to uh, tinker with stuff like compile my kernel, you know, or like compile my window manager and add some funny hacks in so I could do weird things with it. And I had a lot of fun, but in a way, uh, you know, switching over to Mac has kind of prevented me from <laughs> having too much fun by tinkering with that stuff. So in a way, it keeps me more focused. Yeah, it'd be interesting to try. I haven't, I mean, when I was using Linux full time, that was, I think it was like Fedora core way back in the day. I haven't, I haven't tried anything since then. It would be interesting to like, and then uh, when I was working at Pixar, um, yeah, every, everything there was Linux. Uh, that was all, I think Red Hat, something, I don't know what it was, but yeah. So, so yeah, I, I love Linux very, I love the, the open sourceness of it. And yeah, the fact that you can tinker with it so much. Um, Android has some of those similar qualities, so yeah, good, good stuff all around. Love it all, but um, but yeah, just mostly use a Mac nowadays, just because it gets the job done and still has like the Unixy goodness and all that. The Windows does now too with like WSL and everything. So yeah, what I like all of this stuff. So uh, to confirm this, are Android people not seeing? Um, or is anyone running it on a phone and are you seeing what you're supposed to be seeing, which is this, <laughs> like the, the small scale thing with like the big round, uh, back, like shared back button. I, hopefully this is showing up because if you're on Android, you should, if you're on an Android phone, you should see this. Oh, um, this, none of this is on Google play yet. Like this stuff is far too, uh, rough around the edges to release on Google Play. Like I need to, <laughs> you know, once it no longer says player name, uh, things like that, then uh, once all this stuff is wired up, then I'll start releasing test builds on Google Play, but it's it's too early still. So the only way right now to run the Android builds is you can get uh, Bomb Squad Android generic, which has been on the website as of one hour ago. Uh, On tablet mode, so tablet mode, you should see medium UI mode. So tablet mode, which should look like this on a tablet, where it's like, you know, things are, ah, stupid SDL. So yeah, things are a little bit smaller than they are on phone mode. Um, and there's windows that mostly take up most of the screen. It's a little, you know, it can be a little cramped looking, but and then the lovely inventory screen. <laughs> so yeah, this is medium UI mode, which yeah, it's kind of in the middle. And then large UI mode is what it should run on, you know, if you're running it on like a desktop PC or Mac or uh, Linux box. And that is like very small stuff. So this is more, more geared for, yeah, running on a 4K monitor or something. It doesn't look, it always looks kind of ridiculous when you, uh, you know, you play like a phone game on your 4K monitor and it's like the icons or buttons are like 200 pixels wide. Oh, thank you. I, uh, I am excited about this UI. I'm sure there's some, some rough spots, but um, I am happy uh, about having it just kind of unified. There used to be a lot of places where like in co-op mode, you know, it had like random, you know, it showed tickets up here and some other things and like, other windows had to show tickets in the corner of the window and it was kind of just inconsistent. So this gives us a chance where it's just like, hopefully all the important stuff is always going to be in the same place. Settings is always down here. Like even if you're in game, come to the menu, there's still, well, it's covered by the FPS, but there's still settings down there. Oh, that's, oh, I need to fix that. <laughs> okay. There's a bug. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I need, okay. I know what I need to fix there. Yeah. So in game. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> cool. 
when you go to the settings menu in game, it should not bring up all the toolbars like this because <laughs> this, this just breaks everything. And also this should not take you back to the main menu. Okay, all right. See, this is finding bugs. <laughs> There's a, a secret menu to break the a secret way to break the game menu. Now you all know it. Oh yeah, yeah, we we discussed story mode. That would be that would be great. It would be fun. Like I've never been I've never like been uh, interested in writing stories or something, but it would be cool to uh make like a campaign that's just yeah, has a story behind it. Like I said, I think that that is fundamentally like why I wanted to avoid having backstories for the characters is then because we could have some really cool campaigns where we just, you know, come up with with uh, stories. And then you can have it be like a tragic story. Everyone dies at the end or something very like poignant and meaningful. But it doesn't matter because then, you know, we'll just a different campaign has a different story. <laughs> yes, you can main menu in the game. You can unlock treasure chests while you're fighting. <laughs> And this is why we test software. I have, I mean, to be fair, I did make a fair amount of new characters in like 1.4 era. It's just, that's a long time ago. So I'm, I know I'm slacking. I've been basically doing nothing but technical stuff for like five years now. Um, so it's, it is time to make more characters. So I, 1.8, I promise. I mean, the game actually launched with, let's go ahead old version here. Um, when the game launched, there was Kronk, Zoe, Kronk, Zoe, Mel, Snake Shadow. And I think that was... Oh, I guess, yeah, I think Jack Morgan... Wait, was Jack Morgan in there for... He was an addition at some point, but yeah, the game originally only had like four four characters, so I, I did add a lot after launching the game. Um, but yeah, Mel would have been in, or yeah, Mel, or not Mel, uh, Jack Morgan. I know he would have gotten added before um, campaign mode because he shows up there. Um, but I think he was added in like 1.3 or something. Oh, hard mode of campaign, also pro-related feature. Okay, I will fix that. <laughs> Thank you for the heads up. Okay, I'm just gonna, while while I'm here, I'm just gonna do like, what version is it? 1.37 is it? <laughs> I don't even remember what version we're on. 1737, okay. Oh, ugh, can't type. So pro or yeah, uh, hard campaign requires pro. Color selection requires pro. Okay, what else? Is there anything else that we discussed that requires pro? Um, or anything, has anyone found uh, obviously broken things? Oh yeah, this is this is expected. Uh, hosting, uh, paid hosting is now tokens instead of tickets. So that's that's the first <laughs> actual use of tokens in the game. I probably, I mean, I'll leave pro in there with that includes all the, the characters now, but. Um, I'll probably transition to them just being like purchased individually. Maybe I'll just make them cheaper or something. Just to kind of, like I said, I, I do want to make it easier to, like it will be easier to get tickets with the treasure chests and all that stuff. So if you're just playing through the campaign, my hope is that you should be able to unlock characters pretty quick. Um, so even once Pro goes away, I'm not sure. Like I said, I, at some point my thought was maybe adding some sort of like season pass or battle pass sort of system that could be tied in with XP. Like as you gain XP, then you can get a battle pass or season pass and unlock characters instantly or something like that. Um, I'm not sure if that makes sense or if people would like that or not, uh, but that's, that's something I'm considering. So that could be a replacement for pro. I know there's uh, some people have uh, 
strong feelings on battle passes or things, but but I think some some of them do it. Some battle passes work well. Some don't. I don't know. And yeah, maybe infinite onslaught and run around. Those uh, those will probably be individually unlockable. They might just be real cheap, like just like a just to give people some stuff to unlock at the beginning, you know. Gold pass tag. This goes back to like I don't want to make gold pass people a uh, like first class citizens or anything, so it might not have a tag for that. Another thing is um, even though the gold pass right now it, it seems kind of like a special thing that you know it's kind of expensive and all that. Um, there will probably be some versions of the game where the game is just you know a premium game, like you pay whatever for it up front, and then there's no in-app purchases at all. But and effectively in that case. Everyone who buys the game will have a gold pass. So, you know, at some point there could be lots of people with gold passes just because they're playing on, like, let's say Switch or something. Like, if, it, if it's easier to release the game on, like, a console just as a paid game, then essentially everyone would have gold pass there. Uh, so that's, that's another reason for having the gold pass is so that the game can function just as, like, pay up front, you know what I mean? Um, so that's also another reason to not have uh, too many benefits to gold passes, you know, to not have them be like, oh... I'm better than the non-gold pass people. Oh, this... There will be... Uh, it will be fun to... This will... <laughs> it's a cool song. It's, it's probably on the one, uh, 1.9 with squads mode, there will probably be a different song on the squads mode menu because that's basically gonna be uh, like a different, almost a different game altogether when you go into squads mode. It'll have like a, you know different buttons. It'll just be about like inviting your friends and then you know jumping into games together. Um, so you'll probably basically be able to go into like classic mode or squads mode. Um, so that means for squads mode, we can come up with new menu music and all that. So that'll be, that'll be fun to pick. Um, But it would be fun. I, I do, I would love to get, uh, you know, characters that are, you know, it's like Street Fighter 2. Like, every one of those characters was, like, tied to uh, a country. You know, Brazil, you had uh, Blanca, right? <laughs> it's like... So it'd be cool to have stuff like that. Oh, thank you. But yeah, like especially for uh, some of the yeah the countries where the game is big, like Brazil is definitely one of those. Uh, Mexico, it's very big there. Uh, or even places like like Indonesia and other places that like I don't know too much about like culture there or like what would be a cool character, but you know there's a lot of a lot of players there, so it'd be fun to to get something that's kind of like locally relevant. Are you still able to... <laughs> I know we were looking into this. You can still host for free. It should... Like, it should, after you ho you've hosted once or twice, it, it should at some point start uh, charging you one token sometimes. Um, <laughs> it shouldn't be permanent. I think like even though your account info isn't in the database, that's just because you hadn't hosted. So it should... <laughs> unless I something is, is strange, it should eventually uh, charge you sometimes. Oh, beware the cat. Oh, right. Yeah, I gotta. Someone reminded me of that, I think, last show. Like, I was playing something. Luckily, it didn't uh, get marked for copyright, though. Oh, shoot. We are actually over time. It's been two hours already. This has gone fast. So, I think I'll probably have to pass on playing for this week just because I really want to get back to coding. Um, <laughs> Now that I've discovered that that nasty menu bug, uh, 
but if you go to settings while you're in and you're in the game, um, you can break the game. That's lovely. <clears throat> um, but basically, yeah. Anyone, if you want to, oh, did anyone come up with any uh, any other? Oh yeah, let me let me put that on here. Um, fix settings bug in game. I have like thirty other things I need to add here. Just like everything that says under construction. Um, so that's going to be <laughs> over the next few weeks, probably. I mean, realistically, I, I have to move, as I said, moving up to San Francisco. So that's going to be sucking up a ton of my time for the next few weeks. Um, but I will be working on this in whatever time is left. So my uh, my plan is just to try to chew through all these to-do items and then release 1737 as fast as possible. So hopefully I'll get the, the nice shiny UI uh, sorted out and uh, in all of your hands as soon as possible. Go pass. Um, well, as I mentioned, I, you know, I, I kind of feel like for most people, probably if you want to just, you know, buy tickets as you need, or buy tokens as you need them, it'll probably be cheaper than a gold pass. Um, but I can maybe, I don't know, maybe I can think about something, you know, some sort of like gold pass discount if you already have pro or something like that. Um, if you want to met, like DM me, I can, I can see if I can wrangle something. Um, at the same point, I don't want to, I, if, I kind of don't want to do something that is going to require me to like, I don't know, if there's some sort of like discount, I should probably automate it because otherwise like everyone who has pro will be emailing me and then I'll be happy. You know, I, I can't like spend a ton of time, uh, you know, like applying individual discounts for anyone who would want a uh, gold pass, but maybe it would be worth doing some automatic thing like a discount gold pass if you have pro. I'll, I'll look into that, see if that would be hard to wire up. Oh, did I remove this texture account icon? I was gonna say that that texture looked familiar. <laughs> uh, I know there's a, a few textures over the years that have that have come and gone. Um, I, you know, some of the textures uh, wound up in there. You know, just I planned to use them but never used them, so you know, wound up taking them out. Um, I know people people have noticed like you know the treasure chest textures and the store and inventory textures like those have been in there for years now because uh, like I said I've been kind of working towards this for years they just they've never been used till now so finally I uh, have wired those up <laughs> I'd love to do that we'll see after uh, after 2.0, we'll, we'll, maybe that would be possible. I mean, probably if I were doing a console, I don't know, I would maybe do like Switch first because the game is really like, doesn't require much horsepower and you know, being able to play with like four Switch controllers would be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, any of the consoles would be great. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I maybe, I don't know, maybe I should hire someone to help with that stuff. We'll, we'll see if it gets to that point. Like if 2.0 comes out and the game, you know, is very successful on iOS and Steam, like maybe and you know that it became more like money isn't an option then maybe it would make sense i could hire someone to help like get those ports out or something or hire some people i don't know um for right now i'm very comfortable you know just making enough to get by myself and doing everything myself but it does make it a little slow i realize so thank you everyone for uh bearing with me and waiting for all this stuff Uh, but yeah, exactly. What you're saying here is exactly what the plan is. If if there is a version of the game where it's just pay up front, you know, they're, then basically everyone with that version will have the gold pass. Um, they won't. You won't see an option to buy the gold pass. There won't be an option to buy tokens. You'll just essentially have a gold pass. <laughs> so, which is kind of part of the reason for having adding a gold pass, so I can so I can do that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, I know I know the gold pass is a lot more than. Uh, than pro so um, I tried to price it for um, 
you know, what like a, a mid-range game costs on like Steam. Um, I also, on another note, I recently redid a lot of the prices. I think I mentioned this last time. So if you're in a country and it still seems like the game, like the price for token packs or gold pass is like way out of line with other games, uh, please let me know like what country you're in. Because I, I want to try to adjust it just to make, make things, you know, like affordable and you know, reasonable uh, everywhere. So I have made some big adjustments for some countries. So I can, uh, like I said, if it still seems off, let me know. I can at least look into it. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's slow going, but getting there. PS, PS4 is maybe more doubtful. I mean, PS4 certainly has enough horsepower to run the game by far. It's just like uh, whether it makes sense to target that. I would imagine, like, I don't know. Like, do you, are there more PS4 people now? Or I wonder, like, would PS5 or PS4 be a better, like, target at this point? Because um, PS5 has been out long enough. Like, are there, are there enough of them out there? Because, yeah, it's like I wouldn't want to. I'd probably target PS5 first. No, Creative Cloud. I don't want to even install you. PS6. Yeah, by the time it's ready. PS6. Oh, no. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully hopefully the family uh, thing and not the World War Three thing. So, anyway, as, as we're 10 minutes over, I should probably start rat winding down here. Um, any other to-do list things that we covered that I'm forgetting? Um, I should be able to turn through these pretty fast. I'm just gonna, like I said, anytime I have and then uh, until the next coffee with Eric, I'm just gonna be like churning through, wiring up these last UI bits and trying to smooth things over and polish things up. And I should be updating uh, test builds pretty rapidly, I would think. I'll try to update them at least maybe once every day or two or something um, with details on what's been fixed, so yeah. And I'll try to check in on Discord. So if you want to post stuff in, uh, I'll try to check dev discussion. If, if you want to post anything that, that you find that's broken or just message me directly, I'll try to you know get everything polished up as fast as possible. I'd love to get this version just, even if it's not perfect, I'd love to get it working and get it out there and then can get back to finishing 1.8. Oh, sweet, cool. Well, if you want to, um, is that a PR already? I could take a look. And then, yeah, and then Bomb Squad screensavers. That's the next on the list. Or right, yeah, pull request. Have you? Well. Oh, thank you. Ah, oh, there's more. Everyone wants exclusive stuff for the gold pass. Better do, um, well, not to get off on a tangent again. Do people want a load screen? I mean, the game, you know, comes up pretty fast. Like, is you mean loads like this screen or like a, a screen before this screen? I know that if, you know, on older hardware, there's the little progress bar that comes across, but then it should just jump into here. I mean, my, my priority is just, I prefer to make the game just come up as fast as possible. Um, you know, this is a decently recent Mac, uh, so it loads pretty fast. On older things, it's a little slower. I mean, yeah, I'd, Honestly, if, if it's taking, uh, taking the screen a while to come up, I'd almost rather focus on making that faster. <laughs> you know, like we could see what it's spending its time on here and I could like have it do that in a background thread or something. I try to do that in general. I mean, I, I, I hope, you know, the, the game is usually fast enough that it doesn't require loading screens. So it's my preference is to just not bother with them, but spoiler. Hmm? Okay, it looks, looks like it's working there, I think, right? Oh wait, is that Windows 10, 7? What is that? <laughs> is that working on Windows 7? Or is that, what are we seeing here? What's, what's going on? Is it, I thought it didn't run on 7, that's cool. Or did, 
Maybe this was discussed recently. I know, like, I think Python, like the version of Python it's using doesn't officially support Windows 7 anymore, so I can't, like, officially support Windows 7. But yet, yeah, there it is. What's, <laughs> what's going on? Oh, thank you. I'd be curious to, because I, I know it's like, yeah, Windows 7 is not officially supported anymore. Um, it'd be interesting to see how many people are still using it. I know like Windows XP after uh, ever, you know, XP was still in use by tons of people for years after it was, you know, considered unsupported and all that stuff. So I know it kind of made sense for games to support XP as long as possible. Um, I don't know if that's still the case with Windows 7. Like I said, it's kind of out of my hands because the, the, the only limitation or the main limitation is Python itself. Like I can't, I can't make Python support older versions of Windows. Uh, so I'm, I'm mostly, the game will be limited to whatever Python supports, but that should be most, most recent versions. But yeah, it would be interesting to see like who's still running Windows 7. All right, well, anyway, on that note, I'm gonna get back to coding. Uh, I'll get this video up on YouTube if anyone wants to look back on it or anything like that. Really <laughs> good. Very smart, but it's like, see, you all have like cool backstories for the characters anyway. You don't need mine. <laughs> uh. But we should answer these questions. Why is Mel fat? <laughs> uh, so much lore. Love it. All right. Anyway, it's been fun, everyone. So everybody take care and I'll let you know. Um, I'll try to be more forthcoming if, if my moving is going to interfere with uh, the next coffee with Eric or anything like that. Sorry for the short notice the last week or two. Um, but anyway, been fun all, and I will talk to you, all you folks next time. So peace out.